You know those moments when you're talking to someone and it doesn't really matter what the topic is, but you're talking to someone and something comes out of their mouth that makes you wonder, is this person being serious or is he trolling me? It's like someone said that the Apple mouse is awesome industrial design, or that Zack Snyder's abuse of slow motion is absolute cinema, or that a toast sandwich has a reason to exist. Is there any signal on their face or the body language that we could pay attention to so we can confirm if they are officially nuts or just joking? Well, yes, there are signals. And that feeling is exactly what went through my mind when I watched this exchange between Drew Barrymore and Kamala Harris. And I had to watch it more than once, but in your case, maybe just one time should be enough. Yeah. But in our country, we need you to be Mamala of the country. Yeah, Momala. But I have seen outrageous clips from Drew Barrymore before, like the time she kneeled down in front of Dylan Mulvaney. So yes, there are enough records to ask the question. Is Drew playing a persona or is she genuinely like this? And I want to jump right in the middle of the action of the previous clip when Kamala had just heard how Drew called her. You don't need to be a body language expert to see that Kamala was containing her laughter. And in which situations do we contain our laughter? Well, usually when we don't know if it's appropriate to laugh. And if we don't know if it's appropriate to laugh, it might be due to the fact that we don't know if the person is cracking a joke or they genuinely mean what they said. So, just in case, if you have trouble detecting what's going on with Kamala's mouth, what happens is that when you want to contain your laughter, all the muscles around the mouth become tense. Depending on how much do you want to laugh, this is going to be more or less intense. And when the muscles around our mouths are all tense at the same time, our lips, which do not have muscles on their own, will be compressed under the force of all the surrounding tissue. Also, you notice that at first she brings her mouth down and then she brings it up. Again, it's all that energy contained in there trying to do something, anything about the laughter. So imagine that Drew Barrymore said something that put Kamala Harris in this awkward situation. And we are talking about Kamala Harris, a character already famous for clips like this. Everything is in context. My mother used to, she would give us a hard time sometimes and she would say to us, I don't know what's wrong with you young people. You think you just fell out of a coconut tree? <laughs> you exist in the context. Well, to be fair, she's not wrong. Context is important to make sense of things. And in this case, it would be helpful to know what was Kamala looking at when she made that expression. And of course, she was looking at Drew. But we already know what Drew said. We need to look at her face. And the first thing is the general movement. That up and down gesture is affirming, and that is almost universal. When Drew says, you need to be the momala of the country, she does that with that up and down swing. In this case, she's not replying yes to something, but she's using that head movement to affirm her words. Remember, we are trying to confirm that Drew Barrymore is serious about what she's saying and not just trolling everyone. And what I see on her face is, uh, the first impression upon watching this is, that she's looking directly at Kamala, with no sideways neck tilt, and she's leaning into her. Her head is straight and focused. And this is a common signal when you not only mean business, but at the same time want to make sure that the other person senses the urgency in your words. But what is more important is what we don't see. There are no winks, uh, which would confirm that this is a joke, or maybe a subtle smirk, like an asymmetric smile that would... That would not mean disdain or contempt, but rather sending a signal so the other person knows that it's a joke. But there's none of that. In fact, her mouth is rather neutral, so, so far all points that, yes, uh, Drew Barrymore is officially nuts. And we still need some more signals, though. You don't want to rush uh, an analysis like this. I see her brow area, and this is how you confirm that someone uses Botox. I have nothing against Botox. If you want to have a shot at it, Pun intended, 
then go for it. Who am I to judge? But one thing that Botox does is that it makes it harder for other people to read your facial expressions. And in Drew's case, I can see that her eyebrows are raised because you see subtle horizontal wrinkles on her forehead. But here's the thing. Her expression feels more urgent than that, because even if the muscles between her brows are not working, we still see the shape of her eyes. And this is one thing to remember about Botox. It is not going to affect your muscles in a clear-cut way. Its effects are going to be more intense at the exact spot of the shot and disperse as you move further away. Even with Botox, our eyes can still project the emotions that the brows can't. And that's what I see here. Urgency. This has to be done. You must become Momala. And if you still, still have doubts that Drew was being funny or sarcastic, we need to take a look at her face right after Kamala's reaction. But before we go there, it's a good idea to review how Kamala relaxed her face to the audience. And you know that the audience doesn't have much of a say here. They just have a light that signals that they should cheer whatever Drew is doing on the stage, and they have to do it like, at the push of a button. Now, what was going on through Kamala's head is anyone's guess, but I would say that she was thinking that Momala was not that bad for a presidential campaign. Catchy, direct. But jokes aside and going back to Drew, this is a better angle of the same expression we saw before. But in this case, you have even more signals that she's been serious about this. Still the lack of wrinkles on her brow area, but the way her eyebrows and the expression in her eyes are unmistakable. She is quite serious about this, and that's why she reaches out to Kamala and grabs her hands in one last gesture of connection. But a question arises, as usual. Isn't Drew Barrymore an actress? Couldn't she be acting the part, interpreting a character, fooling everyone, but deep inside not really believing what she's doing? And there is that possibility, yes, but this is something that I should make another video about. Like when we talk about cult leaders, do they drink their own Kool-Aid? Do they really believe their own precepts? Aren't they just manipulating people? We are not talking about cult leaders here, but the principle is the same. When you have to interpret a character, it's much more difficult if you're doing it in a superficial way. As in, the character you're trying to play has a different set of principles or values than you. It is vastly easier if the person transforms her core beliefs. In other words, it starts by manipulating herself, so it makes it easier to project those beliefs on other people. In fact, that's how brainwashing works. Only that the first person that you're going to apply it on is uh, yourself. And what is more common in cases like uh, Drew Barrymore is kind of a reinforcement cycle. Maybe she didn't start this way years ago, but over time and over a number of episodes, she realized that her target audience reacted better to some aspects of her on-screen persona and just ignore others. So she just did more of what the audience wanted. Given enough time of this reinforcement cycle that you feel good every time you have that positive feedback from your audience, it essentially starts to model your core personality. You become the persona that you're projecting. And that, in turn, makes it easier to play the persona that the audience wants to see. So we could pick silly moments like this and joke about them, but it's also a complex topic in terms of mass persuasion and mass manipulation. And Nietzsche would say that the more you try to persuade your audience by appeasing to them, the more they will end up persuading you, and the cycle will repeat endlessly. But I would love to know what you think about this in the comments. Don't forget to download my free 100 Battle Language Tips in the description of this video. My name is Jesus Enrique Rosas. I'm the Battle Language Guy. Much love and bliss.